Okay, we are back with another aspect of um, mathematics. Mamu Ujabi's life from um, life, as it were. And um, the aspect we are looking at now is the aspect that talks about change of subject or formula. It's still algebra, still talking about equations. Students will ask, change of subject or formula, what's it all about? I have a very simple definition for it, change of emphasis. It means that in this equation, or in this formula, a formula is an equation. A formula is an equation. So in this setup, we have an equation, or a formula if you choose to call it that, where you have more than one variable. So we need to change or move the emphasis. Now let's look at what that means. I'll take a simple formula you're already aware of. The area of a triangle. The area of a triangle. We know that to be what? A, capital letter A, equal to half base times height. Is that not? Which base on our last class we can write as what? BH over 2. If you still can't catch that, let me give you a little iteration to what that would mean. I see that just to help you connect the last class to this class. Right? So it means that what we are working with will be A equal to b h over 2. Now, the examiner can say, change the emphasis from the area to the base. Make the base be the subject of the what? Formula. Make the base be the subject of the formula. How do you do that? It means Change the emphasis from this, from this rather, to this. The examiner can also say, change five or change the subject of formula from what? This to this. So make H the subject of the formula. Now, let's go back to English language grammar. The subject and the object. There's something we call the subject, is that not? That's what we call the object. The emphasis is always on the subject. The emphasis is always on the word, the subject. Everything said in that sentence or made is always on the, the emphasis is always on the subject. So as mathematicians, we have borrowed that. And we have said, okay, look at this ex uh, equation or formula. Now, make this one the emphasis. Now let's go back a little, because sometimes students still find it difficult to understand that an equation and a formula, they are related but they are not exactly the same. So let me, let me make it easy. A formula is always an equation. But not all equations necessarily will be a formula. A formula is always an equation. Now, what is unique about a formula? In a formula, you have different subjects or different terms. Emphasis. For instance, if you want to find the area, what you need is what the base and the height. Is that not? If you want to find the base, what you will need is the area and the height. If you want to find the height, what you will need is what the base and the area. Okay, we'll come back later to look at this properly, but because I'm going to build you progressively, I wouldn't solve, show you how to change this subject for now. So we'll take it gradually and we'll go to our text, which is the New General Mathematics for SS1, page 82. I'm going to write with that, page 85 rather. Page 84, sorry about that, page 84, exercise 6F. And then we'll begin to take the questions one after the other, 
and show you what you must pay attention to as you solve the problem. Okay, we are back and then uh, we'll be looking at our exercise, exercise 6F. Uh, we'll be trying to make X the subject of formula for a number of questions we're going to have. The first one is a simple one that says X plus A equal to B. X plus A equal to B. So, clearly the subject in this question is X. Now, the subject is always kept on the left hand side and every other thing is moved to the world, right hand side. What we will be learning is how, or should I say, our decision, what are the things we need to do to move the others to the other side. Not everything you can move like that. And my favorite character in this setup is the one we call Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Not every character you can just snap and they will leave. No, some characters are very stubborn. So you need to use stubborn approach to push them. Some you can just touch. Some you have to push. Some you have to use shove it, pack them and throw them out. So let's see those ones that we're going to need shove it to pack out now. Now let's look at this. X plus A is equal to B. We don't need A. What is A? A is added to X. If A crosses equality, what does it become? It becomes negative. So in solving this, you need to apply your knowledge of what? Additive inverse. What are you doing? Apply your knowledge of what? Additive inverse. So you just move this and X becomes equal to B, what you have on your right hand side, minus A. And that takes care of that problem. Now let's look at the next one, number two. A minus X equal to B. A minus X equal to B. A minus X equal to B. Hear the rule here. The subject must always be positive. I need you to pay very close attention to what I'm doing. Many textbooks won't tell you this, and there are some things we can't even write down. Thank God for technology, thank God for YouTube and things like that. I can better relate to you my thought process. The subject, remember the first principle, the subject must always be on the left hand side. One. Two, from this, the subject can never be negative. So the first thing you need to do is to try to see how the subject becomes what? Positive. What is the subject? The subject is X. So look at this. I will move this to the right hand side. Somebody will quarrel ah, or argue. Why am I moving this? Just be patient. Watch and see what we're going to do. So this will be A on the left hand side. I bring B. The additive inverse of B is negative. The additive inverse of negative X is X. Crossing the body side becomes X. Becomes what? X. Now, we are not done. Remember we said that the unknown or the subject must be on the left hand side. We are not going to apply a technique you were taught in your grade 8. I, always, I call that technique rewriting. You rewrite. You rewrite. What does this mean technically? It means that I would write my left as my right and write my right as my left. So that will now be what? X equal to A minus B. Keep it simple and more often than not, keep it very stupid. That's the way to get mathematics done. Don't think too much. Take it easy. All right, so we're done with number two. Okay, we have question three on the board, and it says AX. AX, 
means a times x. Let's clear this. I don't want to assume that, oh, they know it. No. Ax means what? A times x equal to what? B. In this setup, the subject is x. So any number or letter multiplying x is called the coefficient. So a is the coefficient of x. Remember, in earlier maths, you would have been told that 2x, the question is 2. But I'm here to bend the rules of reality here. Put that not one vision. To tell you that a coefficient can also be a letter. Let us think. So the coefficient can also be a letter. Under the context of a formula, once the subject has been known. So in this question, the subject is x. So anything that multiplies x is, tr is treated as what the coefficient. Now, if the coefficient is multiplying x, to clear a coefficient, you divide both sides by the coefficient. I'll come again. To clear a coefficient, you divide both sides by what? A coefficient. So if we know the coefficient to be x, to be a rather, we divide both sides by what? Sides rather, by what? A. Meaning that x will now be equal to b over a, because this a will cancel this a. So that will now be what x will be with respect to this uh, equation or formula. Okay, we have question 4 on the board. ax plus bx equal to c. In this question, your knowledge of factorization is tested. Let's look at the left-hand side of the equation. You discover you have ax, you have what? bx. In your grade 8, I think that should be chapter 6 or there about of your new general mathematics, you would have been taught something called HCF or algebraic factors. What you notice is that if you look at the right hand side, something is common to left hand side rather, something is common to AX and BX. What is that? X. So you factor out. And in one of my videos, I remember saying that anytime we talk about factors, two terms or two types of operators come to mind. You say that you are multiplying or you are dividing. Anytime you think about factors, the context should be dividing or what? Multiply. So if you go back here, it will mean that x is common and I factor x out of this. Now what's happening? Look at, look at what's happening. If I factor x out of here, it means I divide here by x. What is left? A. If I factor x out of here, what is left? B. To factor out is to divide and suck out. And that will be what equal to C. Here, listen attentively. What is the subject? X. Because X is the subject, B plus C become the word coefficient. I think it was more just who said something. Some rules can be bent. Others can be broken. See, when you are learning mathematics, don't tie your brain to it. Must always be like this. No, free your mind. You really need to. You want to be outstanding in mathematics. You don't need intellect. You need to just have a very free mind. Open your mind to possibilities. This I will rewrite to be this, so that for purpose of clarity. I see that I have changed the order now to what you are used to. But the fact that I've written it like this does not now make this not to be a coefficient. This remains the coefficient. In your grade 8, I think your grade 8 maths or algebraic expressions, they will test your knowledge of this. Where after writing like this, they force you to rewrite it like this. Not rewrite as, as well. 
you are arranged to this form. So you see, you will you be well prepared for this day, but maybe you weren't paying attention. If you go back to pick your grade 7, 8, and 9 textbooks now, if you would do that, the understanding will be awesome. Now, I will now divide both sides by A plus B. Now, A plus B is like having uh, jollof rice. Can you separate the jollof from the rice? No. Because that's what some of us do. We will not say what will cancel the jollof from the rice. It doesn't work like that. So that said, you divide both sides by A plus B. This must cancel this. You don't cancel them individually. I've seen that in some, some um, scripts I have marked and I'm wondering why that is possible. They are together. They are together. They are together. Let no man put us on that. They are together. So this will now be x equal to c over a plus b. So that's what's happening there. x will be equal to what? c over a plus b. A plus b is together. So what I will advise you, do exactly there. To tell your assignment that you know what you are doing. So that's for question four. All right, uh, that's the much we can take on this topic. You'll discover that every question provides us with something unique we need to know. Um, I hope for those of us who are very smart, you would have gotten some things better. And uh, till I see you in my next class, this is Mamu Mijabis signing out from the multiverse. Thank you. Okay, so it's mathematics once again, and we're looking at grade 10 algebra, change of subject or formula. Welcome to mom. All right, so we've attempted a number of exercises here. We've looked at exercise 6F. We've done question 1. We've done question 2. We've done question 3. But while we have recap, we'll try to ask ourselves a very silent question. What does it mean when we talk about change of subject or formula? To change a subject would mean that there are other terms present. Let's look at question. Let's look at this question just by way of recap. A plus x equal to b. From this question, the subject is b. Now, if I were to change the subject to x, it would mean that a plus x would be equal to b, and x becomes what? b minus a. So to change a subject would mean to change emphasis, or move emphasis from one letter unknown to the other. other. And that's why we say that the concept of change of subject or formula has to do with formula. A formula is a type of equation, and I trust that there's nobody who is in confusion in this regard. So with that, we'll go back to our exercise 6F, taking it one question per time, and then try to look out for what we need to understand per the question. We've been able to discover four things in handling this topic so far. Um, if you want to know what those four things are, you can go back, look at my previous video, and you'll be able to see four important ideas we've seen in handling change of subject or formula. Right now, we're going to solve more questions and try to see what are other points we can gather. Okay, we've looked at four questions thus far. Now we're going to question five. I'm going to be very slow because I want you to see how these ideas are connected. The first thing we learned from previous questions had been this one. We start by ensuring that the unknown is on the left hand side and the known is on the right hand side. If you look at this question, you will discover that the subject, the emphasis, is on the left and on the right. There are two options for you to solve this question. 
are two options and any one you use is correct so i'll just take one and flow with that i already have a part of the subject on my left hand side so what i need to do is to bring the other subject to my left hand side so that will mean that this will be a x now i'll be using the concept of additive inverse what's an additive inverse i think of a number such that when I add it to its original or to itself, it gives me zero. So the additive inverse of one is negative one. It's like say, what is the bad side of you? And that's where my favorite narrative comes to bear. The concept of alternate universe, para universe, and that's those absurd concepts that even when you have somebody who is good, in an alternate universe, if that would ever exist, you have a bad aspect of him. That's the concept of additive inverse. So, if I have you here in this universe as positive, if you cross the barrier to another universe, I expect you to be negative. And this will cross in that fashion. And I have this. So, we will now, at this point, Recall what we had done in question 3 and 4. You discover that here, x, x, if you look at the left hand side, there is x here, there's x here. Is that not? So you would apply the knowledge of what? Factorization. So I will factor x out of this. And to help us, I'm going to be writing on this part of the board. What I have in question is ax and x. To factor is to divide. So I'll divide this by x. I'll divide this by x. To factor is to apply division to the content of the brackets. To factor means to what? To apply division to the what? Content of the brackets. So what do you do? This go here. This go here. I factor x out. I'll be left to what here? A. Is that not? I divide this and this. Beautiful, minus 1 is actually your grade 8 work. And this will give you negative B. And what do I have next? I divide both sides by the coefficient. And let me take this back a little because uh, in your grade 8, I think chapter 6 or thereabout, we were taught, uh, chapter, not chapter 6, we were taught the concept of. Um, Coefficients. If this is a subject, this automatically, this automatically becomes your coefficient. And you know that when you're writing coefficient, you always write the coefficient before the unknown. Is that not? So let's obey that order. That will mean that this will become what? A minus 1 into x equal to negative b. You divide both sides by the coefficient. And uh, there was an example I used in the previous class. I talked about jollof rice. It is jollof rice because you're adding jollof to rice, whatever the jollof makeup is. You cannot separate jollof from rice. It's not possible. Once you have jollof rice, that's to be jollof rice. That's the same idea you're applying here. So I don't see, I don't understand why students will not want to cancel. You see, you cancel this and cancel this. Hey, from where? It's not possible. So the content of my jollof will cancel the content of my jollof here, and I have x equal to negative b over a minus 1. Settled. Now that's one method to solve this. There is another method, but because we're just introducing the concept, I won't stress you at all. Let's just keep it that way. But I know some of us who are very curious and inquisitive might begin to see how that is done. All right. Here we have an interesting setup. Let's look at question six. We have an interesting setup. A over x equal to b. In this setup, the subject now is the denominator. So we are not using additive inverse here. We're going to use what is called multiplicative inverse. The concept of 
multiplicative inverse says that if I have a fraction, you've done reciprocal before. The reciprocal of 1 over 2 is what? Is that not? So, I'm being very careful, but let, let's go with the, the idea you're already very used to. You say you cross multiply, is that not? Yes. But technically, there's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. So, let me upgrade, make, let me touch up. Let me need to use contemporary ninja. Let me touch up what you're doing. Now, a over x equal to b, I think of the multiplicative inverse of 1 over x, and that will be what? x, is that not? When I think of that, I will write that on the other side. So this becomes a equal to bx. So why you, in your yarns, as it were, say b, you cross multiply or whatever, I just get, helped you, touch it up. Do that one in your brain, but know that what you have done is that you have transferred this by writing your multiplicative inverse on the right hand side. Exactly. Right. So this will mean that A is equal to. Alright, so having done that, the next thing you do, we're going to apply an idea we had, we brought in when we started that the unknown must always be kept on the what? Left hand side, or the subject must be kept on the left hand side. So to do that, we use a technique called rewriting. To rewrite is to make my left right and make my right left. So that will now be what? Bx equal to A. We would use another knowledge we have gathered from the first four examples we have, we have, we have, we have done. We divide both sides by the coefficient of the subject. Proud to now, you have been told that the coefficient must be a number. Some rules can be bent, others can be bro broken. That's what Morpheus told me. So, what it means here is that we are bending the rule a little to help you understand now that once in this topic, change your subject or formula, we have identified the subject. Whatever is multiplying the subject is a coefficient, even if or irrespective of the fact that it is what a letter. So that's what that means. X will have equal to what? A over B. That's all that. Now, let's look at the next question we have on the board. A over X plus B equal to C. Here, the subject is on the left hand side, but there's a problem. The subject is still a denominator. So, what do you do? But that's not where the bigger problem is. These letters need to be dealt with first. I don't need them on the words, I don't need them on the left hand side. So, this is what I take care of first. Or rather, this letter, I don't need it. So, I'll have A over X equal to what? C minus B. I see that A will be equal to, A over X will be equal to what? C minus B. How did I do, how did I get that? I move, I write the additive inverse of B on the what? Right hand side. Eh? Peter Parker, Spider-Man, Tony Stark, Iron Man, uh, Chichala, Black Panther, Black uh, Kent, who now? Black Kent, Superman, Bruce Wayne, Batman. That was happening here. So when they put on their costume, they pick up another identity. That was happening here. It's nothing, it's nothing more than that. So at this point, you need to take care of this. Beautiful. So A is equal to X into what? C minus B. What do you do? Rewrite. You see the steps. You see the connection now. So you need to know what to do. As you see the problem, you look out for what relevant idea you need to apply there. And here becomes what? Um, X into C minus B equal to A. 
Remember that this is your what? Coefficient. So you divide by what? But at this point now, I didn't rewrite it. I didn't, order, I didn't arrange it anymore. I know that this is my coefficient, irrespective of where I've written it. So I divide both sides by my coefficient. Jollof rice. You can't knock out rice. So that will not be what? So your final answer becomes what? X equal to A over C minus B. And I'll set with that. All right, let's, let's look at that. In this setup, you need to add the, the additive inverse. So this will be x over a equal to what? c minus what? b. What's the next thing you do? You multiply the reciprocal of one over a with your right hand side. So x will now be a into c minus b. And that's all. Now, let's look at the question on the board. It says x over a plus x over b equal to 1. Now, this is another question where you have close to two or more methods of solving this. I, I think I'm forced to look at the methods. Okay, let's, let's take the methods. Let's see method one. Method one. I can factor x out. I'm going to have one over a plus one over b equal to one. I use my concept of LCM here, and I'm going to have x into um, b plus a over ab equal to 1. And then, now, I will add the reciprocal, I will multiply the reciprocal of this to this side, and I have x equal to ab over a and b plus a, which is very good, but ab over a plus b. That's one method. Now, let's look at method two. Now, in method two, what I will do is to multiply through by identifying what the LCD will be. The LCD of this will be what? AB. This denominator is what? A. This denominator is what? B. Let's take us back. Um, it's not a crime. A, B. Um, under algebraic um, factors, we're taught that the letters are treated as what? Algebraic primes. Just as you have prime number, every letter in the English alphabet is treated as what? An algebraic prime. Huh? My grade, present grade 8 are very used to this concept now. Every letter is an algebraic prime. So with that idea, A will be what? 1, and this will be what? B. B here will be what? 1, 1. So the LCD will be what? A, B. So with that, I will then multiply through by what? A, B. Remember, we are dealing with what? Algebraic, it's more like an algebraic fraction now. So I will multiply through by what? A, B. If I multiply through by A, B, I'm going to have that uh, this one will now be what? B, X plus what? A, X equal to what? A, B. You see the answer I got here is almost forming out. Then I will factor X out. And then I would have that I need to divide by my concept of jollof rice. And what I'm going to have will be what? X equal to what? A, B over what? B plus A. A, B over B plus A. I can rewrite this. And this becomes what? A, B over what? A plus B. Maybe I should take out time to explain this part. If I say 2 plus 3, what's the answer? 5. Good. If I say 3 plus 2, what's the answer? 5. If you, if you, if you have an opportunity to see my video on algebraic, on arithmetic, I think whole numbers or concept of numbers, you would see that I've done a total work on this aspect. If you add up two numbers, irrespective of the order in which you're adding them, the answer will be the same. 
by extending that idea, you will see it here too. If I say A plus B, and I say B plus A, the result will be the same. And that's the same idea we are using here. So, method one, method two. Anyone you use, you're very correct. So let's, let's look at the, 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 the method uh, just brought in by one of our professors. Now, you have x over a plus x over b equal to 1. Now, what he has done is to take care of this part first. It's allowed in maths. So you have the LCD to be AB. I have BX plus what? AX. And that will be equal to 1. Huh? So you multiply by the... So you have BX plus AX equal to what? AB. You discover that what he has done is almost like what you would have at this point, I think. Look at that. So from here, you're going to have that x will now go into b plus a equal to a b, and then um, x, technically x, will now be equal to what? a b over what? b plus a, meaning that x is equal to what? a b over a plus b. All right, so that will take care of that. That's for question nine. Okay, so we will try to look at question 10 on the board. A over x plus b over x equal to 1. How do we handle this? In this setup, the denominator is x. So, uh, this is where that method 3 becomes very relevant. That's your method 3 becomes very relevant here. Or alternatively, what's the LCD here? The LCD here is x. The LCD is x, so you may want to just multiply through by what? x. And that gives you a plus b equal to x, and x equal to what? a plus b. Settled. I have a theory, and then I'm yet to see a problem that will break that rule. For any very good student, it can take you more than a minute to solve no matter how complex the change of subject formula is. For an average student, it shouldn't take you more than three to five minutes, irrespective of the complexity, to solve change of subject or formula. And it has been proven that that theorem is very correct. So let's look at question 11. In question 11, we have x into x plus b, x, is that x, am I right about that? a into x plus b equal to 1. a into x plus b equal to c. a into x plus b equal to c. How do you handle a problem like this? How do you handle this? The first thing you need to do is to cast out this spell called a. Take note. You can't assess the content here without taking care of A. So the first thing you need to do is to divide both sides by A. Now, some school of thought will tell me, Uncle, but I can just open the bracket. Well, you're very correct. You're right, you can do that. But I usually don't take that approach when it comes to teaching change of subject or formula. There's a spell here. You need to cast that spell out. If you do not, you, sh you can't assess the content. So your best bet is to divide both sides by what? A. So this will give you x plus b equal to c over a. At this point, we use our concept of additive inverse to move this out. And x is equal to what? c over a minus b. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. In some exams, this option might not be available. So you already know how to look for LCM and things like that. And this will give you C minus A, B over A. Because remember that for every whole number you have, it is always over... Every whole number or letter is always over 1. You mustn't forget that. So you begin to see that in our study of maths, 
The challenge, more often than not, is not the new ideas you're trying to gather. It is the old ideas that you have not held very firmly. Okay? In question 12, what you observe is that the other aspect of this subject is trapped in a tray by somebody called the train man. So we have a responsibility to rescue him. How do we do that? The best way to rescue without killing him is to open up the brackets. I see that. So when I open up the bracket now, it becomes free. And then I can move using my concept of what? Additive inverse. So this will be AX minus BX equal to BC. What's next? I will factor out food. So X into A minus B equal to BC. What's next? This is my coefficient. I divide through. I see it. You need to identify what is what and apply what is necessary. So I divide by what? A, B. Remember the concept of our jollof rice? And divide by what? A minus B. And that will be X equal to B, C over A minus B. Settled. So, the question says A into B minus X equal to what? Cx. This man is trapped here. We need to rescue him. So to do that, this will be AB minus AX equal to CX. Now, this is where the new rule is coming. Remember we said that the subject cannot be negative. But that's one aspect of it. Let's see whether that already applies to the problem in hand. If you look at this, the subject here is what? Positive. So it wouldn't be, we don't have a problem with this. So we will rewrite. You move a little inverse concept. Factorize. Divide by coefficients. Which is also what? So that's it. All right, so let's look at this. The LCD uh, is what? 6A. Very good. So that will be X. That will be 3. X plus 2X over R. Equal to 6AB. Is that not? What was spot on on that? Alright, so that means 5X will equal to 6AB. X will now be 6AB over 5. So that will bring our class to an end today so that we can breathe very well. Uh, this is Mamu Wijabis signing out. Hoping you join us. And then keep the mathematics learning experience alive. Thank you very much. Thank you.